So why did Jesus die for us? That's something that we're going to answer in this lesson. You've heard about Jesus Christ. You've heard that he came and he suffered on the cross. He died for us. But why did he die? Well, Jesus died so that he could help us live forever and be happy forever. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So Jesus died so that we could go to heaven. Heaven is a place where we could live with Jesus and our families forever and that we could be happy forever. So can you imagine living with Jesus, living with your mom and dad, and yeah, being happy forever, uh, having no sickness, no death. All your tears of sorrow will be dried up. Um, this is a place, not very many people have seen it, but it's a place that I'm sure is beautiful beyond com comparison. We don't know how wonderful it is, but Jesus died for us so that we could be there with our families. So in order to get into this place, this beautiful place, to live with God again, um, we can't live with God and be unclean. So it says that uh, no unclean thing can dwell in the presence of God. So we have a few problems here. We have a few problems that prevent us from getting to heaven on our own. So we have something that's called the fall. The fall of Adam. The fall. So what happened in the fall? Uh, we have here a, a beautiful garden. Adam and Eve were the first man and woman created. We have this beautiful garden. And God said to Adam and Eve, you can eat of any of the fruits, but there's this one fruit I don't want you to eat. Don't eat it. If you eat it, you're going to die. So Satan, who knows what Satan exactly was thinking, but Satan came, uh, it says he uh, came in the form of a snake or, or had the snake tell, uh, he spoke by the power of the snake. And the snake told Adam and Eve, well, eat, eat this fruit. You won't die if you eat it. You'll be wise if you do this. Well, Satan was mixing truth with lies. He was, he told, he lied to them, right? He said he would, they wouldn't die. Um, so, so Adam and Eve they partook of the fruit, and God told them not to do it. But at the same time, they did get some knowledge. They did have it was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So they gained a little bit of knowledge of, of what, was, what was bad and good. They, they, they got some experience on their own of what sin was. But because they sinned or they transgressed, they started to have uh, sins. So their souls weren't as pure as when they were first created. And we all sin. We all make mistakes. And so because we all make mistakes and we all sin, on our own, we cannot dwell with God because we can't... We can't uh, cleanse our own sins uh, and, and be holy. And God could punish us, but that still wouldn't make us holy to live with him in, in heaven. So that's one problem. So we have this big problem of sin. We all sin. Now, the other problem that prevents us from living forever is that, you guessed it, all of us die. This is a tombstone. All of us will die one day. Our bodies will stop working and... Our spirits will leave our body, and we will die. So that is a problem. So these two problems, we all will die, and we all sin. Those two things prevent us from living with, with Jesus in heaven. Now, thankfully, Jesus, God the Father and Jesus, <clears throat> they prepared a way that, that we could do this. So uh, Jesus, uh, God sent Jesus down to earth to rescue us from those two things, from sin and death from spiritual death and physical death. So I'm going to put here Jesus rescues us. He came to rescue us. And what Jesus did, among many things, among giving us a, a perfect example of, of how to live, he paid, he took upon him all of our sins. So in a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus atoned for our sins. 
So what that means is he took upon him all of our sins. He took upon him the burden of all of our sins and the consequence of all of our sins. He felt all of our pain and sorrow. Jesus not only felt the consequence and the punishment of all of our sins, but he also felt our pains and our sicknesses. All of our burdens that we could ever feel, he felt. And he it hurt so much, it says that he bled from every pore. He sweat, as it were, great drops of blood for the transgressions of his people. So he paid that ultimate price. Now also, he also did suffer on the cross as well. He also continued to suffer for our sins on the cross as he died for us on the cross. And he allowed himself to die. He had power from God the Father to do many things. But he allowed himself to die upon the cross because he knew that he needed to pay that price for us because he loved us. He wanted to rescue us from death and sin. And so he came to rescue us. Now, another wonderful thing is that he, after he died, his body was put in a tomb, and for three, you know, uh, for uh, for two days, uh, it was in there. But on the third day, he came to life again. So his spirit went back into his body, and he came to life again. First time that anyone had resurrected in this world, Jesus came to life again, and because because of that, he overcame death, and. He, because of that happened, he gives each of us the promise that we will be resurrected as well. How amazing is that? So he conquered both of those things. He gave us the ability to come back to life again and to be cleansed from our sin. Now, we can't take all this for granted. Uh, all of us will be resurrected again. Uh, whether we're good or bad, we will be resurrected and will appear before God to be judged of our works. But... In order to be cleansed from sin, we need to do something. We need to do something. Uh, Jesus said the first thing that uh, in Matthew... So, in Matthew, uh, the first thing Jesus says is repent. Repent. What is this word repent? I think, I think a lot of people are afraid to say this word, repent. Repentance. Uh, a prophet, a modern-day prophet has said that... Uh, Repentance is change. It comes from a word, uh, a Greek word, I think, that is metaneo. And it means change. It means changing our thoughts, changing our whole lives. But it's not just changing our behavior. It's changing it with Jesus' help. Because a lot of us have addictions. A lot of us have problems that we can't overcome on our own. We need help. So repentance is change with Jesus' help. It's progress. It's changing and going towards Jesus. So imagine there's a path that leads to Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So imagine there's a pathway to Jesus, and we are here. We do have a choice. We can choose to follow him or not. We can choose to follow Satan, or we can choose to follow Christ. Now, whenever we do what we're not supposed to do, we are sinning. And so we can go down that path. But every one of us, we can turn around. We can change our direction. And we can walk towards Jesus. We can change. We can repent. All of us can repent. If you think you can't repent, then that's Satan lying to you. That's Satan saying that that's Satan's lies again. He's mixing. He's mixing. Uh, truth with error again. He's saying, you've done something bad, you can't change. Well, yes, you've done something bad, you've sinned, but you can change. People change every day. Another thing that really helps us repent and change is baptism. Jesus was baptized. And baptism gives us a special gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it helps us 
have lasting change. It really is a great blessing. So when we repent and are baptized and follow Jesus the best we can, we are assured that we will live in heaven with him. We will have eternal life. It takes effort. The Lord loves effort, but we need help. We can't do it on our own. Even with all of our good works, it's only through the grace of Jesus Christ that we are saved. We cannot do it on our own. Repentance is not paying for our own sins. Jesus paid for our sins. Repentance is simply making those changes that Jesus wants us to make. And um, it's basically practicing becoming like him. And he'll, he paid for our sins and our past mistakes. And so he pays the price. He paid the price. And as we follow him, we can inherit this, this blessing. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions, the first person to turn to is your Father in heaven. Ask him in prayer what is true. Seek for answers in the Holy Scriptures. Read the Bible. Read the Book of Mormon. Read the words of the prophets. And ask your Father in heaven what is true. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. So guys, thank you so much. I know that we can all change through Jesus Christ. He truly does rescue us from death and hell. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you guys. If you want more lessons like this, please like the channel, like and subscribe to the channel, and hope you have a great day. God bless.